Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to solve some supplementary problems to help us understand forces and components even better. If you missed out my video about forces and components, I highly recommend checking it out. It will help you follow along with these sample problems more easily. You'll find the link in the description below. Now let's dive into the problems and get started. Here we have a force of 600 newtons acting at an angle of 40 degrees from the x axis. Let us solve for the x and y component of this force. Let's start by solving for the x component. The x component lies adjacent to the given angle. Remember, cosine gives us the ratio of adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So cosine 40 is equal to fx divided by the force 600 newtons. Or fx is equal to 600 newtons times cosine of 40 degrees. That would give us 459.6 newtons. Now for the y component, it lies along the side opposite to the given angle. And the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse is sine of theta. So this time, we'll use sine to find the y component. That will be sine 40 is equal to fy divided by the hypotenuse f, which is equal to 600 newtons. So fy is equal to 600 newtons times sine of 40 degrees. Solving for fy, that will give us 385.67 newtons. So the components of the 600 newton force are 459.6 newtons in the x direction and 385.67 newtons in the y direction. Here's an important note. Solving for the x component doesn't always use cosine, and the y component doesn't always use sine. It works in our example because our angle is measured from the horizontal. But if the angle were measured from the y axis, the formulas for the components would change. For example, let's say we have the same force 600 newtons, but this time the angle is 40 degrees from the y axis. Now to solve for the x component, Let's take a look at the right triangle again. Since the given angle is opposite to the x component, therefore we will use sine. So sine 40 is equal to fx divided by 600 newtons. Or fx is equal to 600 newtons times sine of 40 degrees. So fx is equal to 385.67 newtons. And for the y component, it is now adjacent to the given angle. So therefore, the cosine of 40 degrees is equal to Fy divided by 600 newtons. So Fy is equal to 459.6 newtons. So always go back to the solution of a right triangle. It is much better than simply memorizing formulas for each problem. Before we continue to our next problem, if you're finding this video helpful, make sure to give it a like and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on more engineering tutorials like this. Next, we have an eyeball fixed horizontally with two ropes connected to it. One rope is carrying a 1350 kilogram load at a 30 degree angle from the vertical. And the second rope is carrying a 3000 kilogram load with a slope ratio of 3 is to 4. Let's find the resultant of these two forces. To begin, since the given values are in kilograms, we first need to calculate the weights acting on each rope. Weight is actually a force, and it's calculated using Newton's second law, F is equals to ma. In this case, the mass is given and the acceleration is due to gravity, which is approximately 9.81 meter per second squared. So the formula becomes weight is equals to mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So for the first rope, the weight is equals to 1350 kilograms times 9.81 meter per second squared, which is equal to 13.24 kilonewtons. And for the second rope, weight is equals to 3000 kilograms times 9.81 meter per second squared which is equal to 29,430 newtons, or 29.43 kilonewtons.
Let's solve for the angle of the second rope. From the given slope of 4 is to 3, we can use the tangent function to solve for the angle. Tangent of theta is equal to the opposite side 4 divided by the adjacent side 3. So the angle will be arc tangent of 4 over 3, which is equal to 53.13 degrees. Now that we've calculated the weights and determined the angles, let's redraw the forces to better visualize the system. Let's complete the parallelogram by drawing three vectors that are parallel to the original force vectors. As we recall, the resultant force denoted as R will be the diagonal of this parallelogram starting from the point where the two original forces met. This angle is also 30 degrees from the vertical since they are alternate interior angles. And since these vectors are parallel, therefore this corresponding angle remains 53.13 degrees. So the included angle opposite to the resultant is equal to 30 plus 53.13 degrees, which gives us 83.13 degrees. Now that we know the magnitudes of the two forces and the angle between them, we can apply the law of cosines to find the magnitude of the resultant force R. So R squared is equal to the sum of the square of the sides 13.24 squared plus 29.43 squared minus twice the product of the two sides and the cosine of their included angle. And solving for R, we get 30.79 kilonewtons. Next, let's solve for the angle of the resultant from the x-axis. We'll call this angle beta. The angle of F1 from the x-axis is 90 minus 30 degrees or equal to 60 degrees. That means the included angle between F1 and the resultant is beta plus 60 degrees. Now we can use the sine law to solve for beta. That will be R divided by the sine of opposite angle 83.13 degrees is equal to 29.43 divided by the sine of its opposite angle, 60 plus beta. And solving for beta, we will get 11.62 degrees. So the resultant of the given forces is 30.79 kilonewtons at 11.62 degrees from the x-axis. And that's it for now. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next one.